got on my gut. I mean, oh my god, do I have a sunglasses tan? Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Margo and I like to sew. That's it. That's the whole intro. Today we're gonna be making a 17th century style kirtle. This past weekend I went to the Ren Fair and I got the prettiest green linen and it's very soft and it was a very affordable price. I got it at the Farthingale Enterprises booth, which is different from Farthingale Corsetry in Canada. Fun fact. It was much more affordable than like the linen at my local fabric stores. So I felt like it was a good deal. The lady was also just happened to be wearing a green kirtle and I was like, how many yards did you use? She's like three and I said, okay, I'll get three yards and I'll make a kirtle. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm going to see how far I can get this weekend. It is a holiday weekend, so I have some extra time. My goal this afternoon slash evening is to flatline the outer layer and some cotton cotille that I got to make it stiff because that's apparently what you're supposed to do and then connect it to a linen lining layer for the bodice piece today. Maybe not connect all the layers today. And then throughout the rest of the weekend, I will gather up the skirt and figure out how to connect the two pieces. I also, when I went to go get the cotille today because I purchased cotille because I don't have any tragosanth on me right now and I was getting tired of making buckram, <laughs> the, I guess, modern buckram way. But while I was getting this cotille, at the store, I was looking at their other linens, like you do, like you do. And they had the prettiest, finest linen, Italian linen, with a beautiful print with flowers and little honeybees, like pollinating the flowers on it. It was $50 dollars. 50 whole effing dollars. And it's gonna haunt my brain forever, because you know, I'm not gonna spend that much money. But anyways, if anyone wants to donate, to the uh, Margot Crafting Fund. Please consider, or please consider subscribing and liking this video because that's free and it does support this channel and it encourages me to craft more. And maybe if enough of you encourage me, even though I will not be hitting any sort of monetary values on YouTube anytime soon, all it takes is one extra subscriber to encourage me. So <laughs> consider that. There aren't honestly a ton of kirtle videos when you search for kirtle tutorials on youtube so hopefully this adds to the mix as far as what i'm going to consider a more beginner friendly approach because i am not aiming for historical accuracy i would say that this is still cost prohibitive but like if you like the style make it out of whatever you want it's for you it's not for anyone else i am excited to make a kirtle and see how it works the pattern i'm using is butterick 4669 I'll talk about this later, but I seem to consistently have fit problems with butterick patterns. I did, however, get most of my historical butterick patterns on sale for like $2 each, so I can't really be that mad about it. To maximize my skirt width, I measured out the length I wanted the skirt to be from one end of the selvage and then cut my pattern pieces from the bottom of the panel for the bodice. For me, that's 36 inches for the skirt, and that gave me plenty left to work with for those bodice panels. I then cut the bodice pieces out of the cotille. I flatlined the green linen and the cotille together. Flatlining always takes longer than I think it will, but I prefer to do it by hand, especially when working with a fabric that tends to shift and warp like linen. So one of the things I always try and do is lay out my pieces so I know what goes where and I don't accidentally like sew the wrong side together because that's definitely not something I've done before. And there's the AC as soon as I try and talk. This pattern says to put these pieces together, then sew the shoulder seam together and then do some like weird bias binding for this seam, which did not make sense to me on the pattern. But because I'm going to bag line the last layer and because I'm doing this the Margo way, I'm just gonna sew, the, I'm gonna sew these pieces together I am going to follow the steps then to sew the shoulder seam together and then I will sew the side back seams together. And then next time you see me, we'll be doing the linen lining layer or the bag lining layer. The princess seams gave me some trouble. I'm still not 100% sure I understand how they work, 
but now you get to see where it all goes wrong because commercial patterns are designed to fit someone with Barbie doll proportions and not real bodies. Okay, I've come into the bathroom to talk. Mostly the fit's okay. There is some gapping right here, which I tend to assume is because I don't have boobs. That's where breast tissue would go, but it's like significant amount. I don't know if bringing this up would help, maybe. I mean, I could bring it all the way down, but then my boobs are completely out. I don't think that's the intended result. So this is supposed to hit the waistline, yes. This also, like, this one piece is way too long. I don't know how that happened. If I bring... Am I just, like, destined to not look good in princess scenes? Is that my problem? Yes. Don't be a about it. I don't know what you said. <laughs> this entire back piece? Do I like rip the seams out and take my seams in significantly? The mock-up obviously wasn't this ill-fitting because it wasn't so stiff. As you can see, I took in quite a lot. This has brought the arms eye up a ton. I'm like almost regretting. I moved this piece up so it matches the bottom seam. And just like, based on comfort, I don't know if I like the arms eye being there, but you know, that can come in on the, uh, when I do the lining. There is obviously some like, gaffage here in the back, but I'm hoping that it'll come out when I trim this back piece down, which is going to be the last thing I do tonight, is attempt to trim down the back piece and see where that leaves me as far as if this lays flat and if it looks good. Moving this piece up did definitely help with this princess seam. My boobs just don't do what these patterns think they do. <laughs> that's simply it, that's, that's all there is to it, you know? I guess your yeah, next steps are scissors. Okay. Good morning still, it is Sunday. Didn't get anything done yesterday because I went to the beach and then I was just a little too tired afterwards. But it's about 11 right now and I have session zero for my first d, &D campaign, which is really exciting and I think honestly an inevitable part of my life. That means I have seven hours to sew and I plan to utilize all seven of those hours to do so. Step one is getting the lining in for the bodice and then step two that's like super simple step one do the lining breaking no breaking that down it's a little a little more than that but i basically have to make the lining put the lining in and then i need to actually iron the rest of my fabric and then i'm going to mark out some stuff for cartridge pleating and see how much of that i can get done and if i don't get it done, I think it'll be okay to do during my session zero, just to have something to do with my hands. So I've got my iced coffee and you know, we're just gonna put on some alien shows and crack in. I then did things not in that order because I was scared of cutting the bodice pieces to fit. I started at the bottom instead, adding a rolled hem to my skirt and then I marked the center front. Basically what I've done here is I have taken a six inch slit. I've taken some twill tape for reinforcement on the seam. I'm basically going to sew this to the outside and then fold it over and then stitch it to the inside. I made an attempt at doing this by machine and then quickly switched to hand stitching. It was honestly just too much fabric to fight with and I had better control of things this way. I ironed the twill tape to the inside and then did another stitch to hold it all down. Okay, that's not my neatest back stitching I've ever done, but it is back stitching and it's not too ugly. Also, like you can't really see green thread on green fabric, so I'm not mad about it. When I said 6 p.m. earlier, that was 6 p.m. ET. I live in uh, Pacific time. So what I'm going to try to do between it is 1.40 now, I'm gonna try and do in the next hour is I'm going to try to 
pin a bunch of knife pleats into the skirt and we'll either finish up the bodice tonight or tomorrow and then attach the top and bottom tomorrow uh, and possibly, possibly maybe start some eyelets tomorrow, we'll see. Knife pleating just takes the measurement of your knife as your width of your pleats and it was by far the easiest way to pleat down this much fabric. I then pinned and steamed the pleats into place for extra hold. Welcome back to my bathroom. <laughs> Spending a lot of time in here lately. Pleating took me forever, so instead of trying to get the lining started, I'm making sure that the fit is perfect and then I'm going to repattern these after our BB session today. I have had to take in this strap so much so like i haven't adjusted this one yet you can see there's like a ton of give here not the same amount of give here it is bringing this up really high so i am going to do a pretty wide seam allowance sewing this top bit and i also think that it's gonna help this last bit of gapping i have here in this and this is just like it's a I can't believe I'm gonna have this ramped in my bathroom where it's so echoey. But it's just like so indicative of Butterick patterns is that they are made for busty women. And they're made for busty women with really tiny waists. And I'm like, who is that? In like 5% of the population. So it just like really reminds me that if I really need to get my own <laughs> bust block so I can start patterning my own shapes, uh, patterns for me, so they actually fit my body, which is no boob and a belly, a nuisance. I am going to make sure this piece, this shoulder fits this shoulder and they match, and then that's probably all the time I have until this evening, so I will see you this evening. I sewed the inner lining pieces together and then sewed the top edges of the two bodice parts together and top stitched them down for that extra crisp edge. Good morning. It is a holiday Monday. How exciting. That also means that I have all day to myself a tassel. How fun. So where I got yesterday, I had to use my phone to call into my D&D session because my computer was being a brat. So I did not record any of this, but I basically put two basting stitches along here. Before we start attaching the bodice and the skirt together, I need to redo the stitching on the arms here. I basically folded the lining and the outer bit together, sandwiched them and stitched it down, but it doesn't quite fit as comfortably as I'd like to under the arm size. And there's a couple spots where the green linen just didn't fold down enough. So I am gonna pull those seams out. This has been a project of so much seam ripping because I'm just like sort of following my instincts and my instincts aren't always 100% right. But you know, it's a learning experience and you get to learn from me. So enjoy my learning experience. You can see I have a chalk mark here of actually significant amount of how much further I wanna go down. But so I want to do that first, make sure the bodice is all done so I don't have to be making edits to it while I am also fighting with three yards of a skirt. <laughs> let's fix these arms and then let's start lining up the pieces of the skirt and the bodice together. Boy howdy, I spent a lot of time fiddling with this arm eye, and if I ever use this pattern again, I would take a ton out of all three pattern pieces to make this fit my body better. <laughs> Uh, whoops. <laughs> There's some cleaning and fighting with the machine that happened off camera here before I redid these seams at least two more times. I lost count. So I just finished pinning the outer bodice to the skirt. This is a lot of layers <laughs> considering I've already had to take apart and put my sewing machine back together once. I'm gonna go get a fat ass needle and do this by hand. <laughs> I used a back stitch to sew the outer lining to the skirt, and then I used a whip stitch to sew the inner lining, sandwiching the top edge of the skirt between the two layers. I just watched an hour long video and I am 
only now just starting on the back panel for whip stitching. I don't know why the whip stitching is taking so long. I like was optimistic about finishing this tonight, but it's 5.30 and my fingies are starting to get sore. So I think that I will have to put off the eyelets until tomorrow. So I will see you then and I'm going to continue whip stitching forever it feels like at least another hour i don't know how you should happen hello welcome to my lunch break my fun three-day weekend is over i'm sad about it she's almost finished i gave her a little try on yesterday evening after i got the lining all stitched in which fits pretty good last thing we need to do though is lace her up so i saw this on morgan donner's channel i will put a link either in the cards or in the description of where to get it because it did actually take me some time to find where i got this from but it is great and it has definitely in my projects helps me get straighter lacing holes. So I am going to take my lunch break to draft out where I want my holes to be. For that you need your awl and my awl is pretty small so I will also of course need my chopstick to make my lacing holes larger. I don't know how that is going to work against the cotille. <laughs> So I'm gonna let, I'll let you know. The cotille is a lot stiffer than the buckram that I make myself. So I'm not 100% sure how it's gonna turn out. But we're gonna give it, I should not, that's a sharp thing way too close to my face. We're gonna give it a try. I did not have an ideal chalk pencil or a pen that had enough contrast against this fabric. So the layout did shift around a bit. You know, I don't know if it's really a video that I made if there isn't at least one shot where I am fresh out of the shower. So anyways, I have this many eyelets in and I am going to start putting the eyelets in on the skirt. However, the twill tape I have in here, it is not gonna go quite as far in as I want. And I was thinking about it and I do need some sort of extra layer of fabric because the linen itself isn't gonna hold up to lacing. So we've got some more twill tape. I also debated using like iron on interfacing, but I was talking to a friend and we both thought this would be stronger. So I am basically just going to right next to this other piece of twill tape, base this one in on both sides and then continue eyeliding. I think based on the amount of progress I'm making per day, this is gonna take me like two weeks. Hopefully not that long, but it very well might. I'm having a great time. Totally great time here. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, here's, here's the vibe. How does a hole this big end up this small once you embroider? I don't understand. I wanted to add aglets to my lacing. I will not be able to do so now. They're not gonna fit. Editor's note. After a few wears, I think having something stiffer here than twill tape would have been a good idea. Hello and welcome to the corner of my room that is by an outlet. <laughs> sometimes roommates get sick and sometimes you feel safer in your room. I did, I guess I would call it a test wear yesterday on the kirtle. I thought it was going to be a final wear, but the arms were a little too uncomfy. As you can see, there is a huge crease right here from where my arms were pushing into the fabric and it just wasn't the vibe. And I want this to be something that I want to wear and that I find comfortable. I have already seam ripped this arm's eye for like the third or fourth time at this point and repinned it. I'm gonna do the other one now and then sew, sew them back together with my machine on the floor, most likely. Could this have been avoided? Yes, if I knew more about pattern drafting, but this is why the series is called Learning to Sew and not Margot Teaches You How to Sew. What happened is because I was having so much gapping and the easiest way to fix the gapping was to shorten the length of this strap here, this part obviously kept coming up as I kept length shortening this and I should have cut that down at any other point prior to like, you know, making a circle here. 
didn't think about it. I, that is something to keep in mind, especially if you have, you know, proportions similar to me is that this is something you probably will have to do with a lot of store available patterns is adjust the bust size. This is like such like a nice shape though. It, it's probably a pattern piece that I could see myself, you know, drafting this pattern to actually fit me. So maybe look out for that. I also think in the future, I'd probably bring the bust line down uh, just so you can actually, you know, see them. Cause that's fun, right? You know. We like to show off what we do have here. Time to uh, do some more seam ripping again and give this a good old fashioned fix. I feel like I should be considered a professional seam ripper at this point. I took a moment to trim down what would be some of the excess. I honestly should have trimmed more, but I was really nervous about this, but things learned for next time. Even currently, I still think these seams could come in just a bit, but for now, just for you dear viewers, have a reveal as a treat for making it through all of this chaos. All right, let's talk shop. I've just washed my feet off. I don't know why I decided to do that barefoot. I, you know, when I first moved here, that park had grass in it. It hasn't rained in Southern California in a long time. It's like also the first time I've filmed at a park or like a public place by myself. And between the tripod and the, you know, medieval garb. I was definitely getting some weird looks. I only have one complaint about the finished product itself and that is that the arm size are still too high. I will have to go back at some point and really cut these down. I don't know how else to fix it unfortunately and it makes me nervous to take a scissor, pair of scissors to a basically finished garment so I haven't done that yet and I don't know when I'll do that but otherwise the fit is good. This looks good here, the lacing fits, the lacing holes seem sturdy enough. I don't think I would use that Butterick pattern again, except to redraft the pattern to actually fit. But that's it, this is definitely one of the projects I'm a lot more proud of. I think as far as, you know, what I've learned, <laughs> My biggest learning takeaway is making the mock-up out of a bit of a stiffer fabric that has less give. I think that would have been very telling <laughs> prior to getting to this point. And I think one of the things that I think is more noticeable with this project and knowing what else I've made since making this is that I've started to have a more serious relationship with my iron and I think it really shows in the finished edges and the finished garment itself. So that's something to be proud of. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it is a bit longer than some of my older videos, but I had a lot of fun making this and I hope you learned something watching this. Please consider sticking around, subscribing, liking, hitting the notification bell, any of that stuff really encourages me to continue to share my projects and to try new things. Hopefully, you know, this inspires you to get outside your comfort zone to try something new or just, you know, make something that gives you some real joy. I get real serious joy out of wearing this, even if the fit isn't entirely perfect because something about the way I look in it just unlocks something in me of just pure unadulterated joy. 
and I hope if you're on a process of making your own clothes or building your own wardrobe, I hope that you're finding clothes that give you that joy as well. I will see you guys next time. I have some really cool stuff in the works that I can't wait for you guys to see. So be sure to stick around and I will see you soon. Bye.